Hello, and welcome to the second part of section 6.4. We're going to continue looking at vectors and dot products today. So far, we've looked at dot products, we've looked at what a vector is, and we've looked at finding angles between two vectors. Um, we're going to start out today by looking at the definition of an orthogonal vectors. Now, the vectors u and v are what we call orthogonal, which really means perpendicular, if you can dot u and v and get 0. So if you take the dot product and you end up with 0, this tells you that you have a perpendicular um, set of vectors or 90 degree, a 90 degree angle between the two vectors. So example 5 says, or wants to know rather, are the vectors u, which equals 2, negative 3, and vector v, 6, 4, are these two vectors orthogonal or perpendicular to one another? So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to go u dot v, which is equal to 2 times 6 plus a negative 3 times 4. When we go to simplify that, we have 12 plus a negative 12, which equals 0. So because u dot v equals 0, this tells me that these two vectors are orthogonal. And the last thing we're going to look at in section 6.4 deals with work. Now those of you that go on into like a math and science related field or decide to go on and take physics you're going to see that this type of work and pre-calc actually go hand in hand. Now so far in like your physical science classes and stuff when you've talked about work We've talked about work that was done by a constant force that has been acting along a line of motion. And what I mean by that is let's say you have some box that's either being pulled in a vertical, or I'm sorry, a horizontal direction, or something's being dropped in the vertical direction. So in other words, you have something that's going either completely horizontal or completely vertical. So that's acting in a line of motion. Now when we calculate the work for that, we know it's force times displacement, or the magnitude of the force times the total distance. Now we do have scenarios where um, if you have a constant force and it's not being directed along a line of motion, then we're going to have to break it down into vertical and horizontal lines of motion. So something like that might be if you have some little wagon okay and the wagon has a handle and you're pulling on that handle and that wagon handle is being pulled or exerted in a angle of theta degrees what you are essentially going to do is you're going to kind of I like to think of it as squishing you're gonna squish that angle down into your x direction so that's going to give you um, your force which I'm gonna write as F so this would have some force times a cosine of theta. This is going to give you your x value. Or we're going to, um, if we squish it up into the y direction, um, we're going to have to take f times the sine of theta. And we'll look at our next example to see how this works. So example 6 says, to slide an object across the floor, a floor, a person actually pulls on a rope that has a constant force of 25 pounds at a constant angle of 30 degrees above the horizontal. We want to find the work done if the object is dragged 40 feet. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sketch this object that's being pulled by a rope and it tells me that it's pulled with a force that's equal to 25 pounds at an angle of theta equals 30 degrees and I'm going to pull this from point zero over here which I'm going to call this the final point and I know that this is 40 feet. So again I can't just use my force times displacement formula because my force is actually being pulled in between the horizontal and vertical direction. 
Now, ultimately, my object is being pulled in the horizontal direction. So when we go to find our work, our work is going to equal our force, which was 25 pounds. And we're going to multiply that by our distance of 40 feet. But now I have to convert that force into an x direction since I'm looking at pulling it in the x direction. So I'm going to take that value and I'm going to squish it into the x direction and cosine represents x. So I'm going to multiply it by the cosine of 30. Now when you simplify this, you end up with 1,000 times the cosine of 30, and the cosine of 30 equals the square root of 3 over 2, so we have 1,000 times the square root of 3 over 2, which gives me 500 square roots of 3, which is approximately equal to 866 foot pounds and foot-pounds is a unit of work. So on that note, we're going to conclude section 6.4, which will be the last section that we cover in Chapter 6. And I hope you guys have a good night, and I will see you in class tomorrow. Thanks.